put an answer in there for you. All right, so it looks like mostly subscribers in the room today. If you don't have a subscription yet, we do give out a discount code later on in the webinar. Stay tuned to that. Quick follow-up for the subscribers. If you are a subscriber, are you using premium or standard trade ideas? If you're not familiar with the difference, premium is the version that gives you access to the AIs, the AI channels, the backtesting module, the odds maker, the ability to auto trade the AI strategies, the ability to open more than 20 charting windows simultaneously, the ability to also access the premium RBI, GBI windows, that kind of good stuff. All right. So it looks like most in the room already have premium. If you decide you want to do an upgrade, grab that same code we give out later on. It can save you some cash uh, when you do the upgrade on your first installment. Um, as usual, on uh, let me take the poll down first. As usual on Thursdays, your hosts are Andy Lindloff and Jamie Hodge. As I mentioned, we're going to record this, and you get a notification tomorrow about how to find it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the recording and let. Then go ahead and take the wheel. Hey, Andy and Jamie, what's going on this Thursday? Hey, Scott. Thank you very much, buddy. Hello, Jamie. How are you, my friend? Andy, how's it going? I'm good. Uh, yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Well, got a good crowd of filing in. Uh, hi, Mike C. Hi, everybody that's saying hello out there. Thank you, Chris Varley, for firing up the uh, live stream. If you, any of you guys have... Uh, uh, problems with the uh, go to uh, webinar uh, product. We usually don't have any problem, but sometimes if you can't hear us or something like that, you can always check out our live stream. So, uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the trading studio. My name is Andy, and that's Jamie on the other end, and Scott as well. Uh, we're going to provide you with some uh, entertainment for the next oh, 50 minutes or so. Uh, before we do, let's uh, let's uh, jump into the disclaimer here, so we just make sure we make all the uh, lawyers happy all right so this is for content uh, we are content publishers I should say okay this is for educational purposes only uh, we're gonna be talking about some cool stuff today it's looking at some charts and some setups and maybe some possible entries and exits and things like that but guys uh, we want you to understand that this is for educational purposes only all right if uh, we're not trying to uh, give you any investment advice if that's what you're looking for you need to look for a uh, a licensed uh, individual, whether it's a stockbroker, an RIA, uh, an advisor, somebody who can uh, actually legally give you that information. All right, we're gonna. Here's the agenda for today. Uh, doing things a little bit different. Uh, just before I show all those other slides that many of you have seen over and over again, but we have to show them for all the new people we get each week. Uh, but agenda, we're gonna do the market recap, and uh, we're gonna talk about the Holly recap. Uh, Jamie's going to take over then. Uh, last couple of days, and maybe it has something to do with this, just a, the funkiness of the market, Jamie. I don't know what, but uh, it had a really nice run there for, uh, uh, boy, almost a couple of weeks. But uh, the last few days, it's kind of been yeah, then hit or miss. Uh, but anyway, Jamie will take over and talk about that. I'm going to revisit Dawn of the Dead, all right? Uh, a lot of people, when I first introduced this several months ago, uh, really loved it, uh, so I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that have not uh, seen this uh, 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 top list, and basically it's it's a bottom fishing top list. I'm not going to kid you, uh, but we're going to talk about some of the ways you can put this into work. I'm going to show you some some examples of stocks that have been coming over and coming through this last few weeks, and boy, it, it, you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna knock your socks off, I think. But uh, anyway. Uh, and then we're going to do the team price alerts. It's been a while, so we'll uh, we'll get everybody's ideas uh, and do some price alerts now. When we get to this section, remember I need uh, the symbol and I need a trigger. In other words, a, uh, a a trigger price where where you want me to set the alert. And obviously, I'm going to assume they're all long unless somebody says it's a short, uh, and then we'll uh, make that a short. All right, let's move on. Talk a little bit for the new people in here about our uh, support, education, and training, and and we have lots of it. Uh, and and really, our support webinar that you see down there at the bottom. I'm gonna talk about that one first because 
I really believe this is the best place for new people to come. Uh, they come into our, our website uh, chat and we send them over there and they're, they're, they're usually very happy that they went there because not only can you ask questions, you can get to see them demonstrated on the software, which is something you're not going to get through an email, okay, or a, an online chat. Uh, so hit up that webinar. It's every Monday through Friday at 12 Eastern time. Uh, and then we have uh, Monday through Thursday in the same five Eastern time slot, uh, we have a webinar. Uh, you can see uh, the lineup uh, on the left side over there, uh, very educational. We, we encourage you to ask questions. Uh, bear with us because we do have content to present, uh, but we try do try to get to all the questions. And like Jamie's doing right now, uh, one of us will always be in there, you know, answering if we can in text to you. Uh, so yeah, hit these webinars up, come to the support webinars. If you can make it, even if you don't, can't think if you're new and you can't think of any questions, don't worry about it. Somebody's going to ask a question in there that you're going to benefit from. I can promise you that. All right. Uh, and here's the slide for our, uh, daily support session, just like I was uh, referring to. Uh, okay. This is every weekday, Monday through Friday at 12 Eastern time. Okay. So you do not miss that. Okay. And just uh, bookmark that trade-ideas.com forward slash live. This happens to be the same link that if you're having issues today, you can go and watch it live as well. So be sure to, to come to that guys, if you have need any help with the software. All right. Uh, how did I get to these slides? I, I, I must've done something different here. I'm going through all of uh, his slides. Oopsie. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, let me uh, let me just click and see. Bear with me, guys. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I'm gonna back out here and let's just let's just pull up. I'll save this for Scotty. I I covered that already, so I'll move on to the next one and save that for Scott. And we'll pull up the uh, spies here. And you know what's interesting? I'm gonna pull up the 15 minutes spy because Steve was showing me something interesting today. Not something, I, I play around with them every now and then, but uh, I, I do wanna to show you this because we've been seeing the spies have a hard time uh, today, yesterday, and today it keeps getting up to certain levels and just cannot get through, okay? So what might that be? There's no real strong resistance over here or anything, you know, where it's bouncing at. We have some up here. But in many cases, it's not even getting up to that level. All right, so they're going to do an anchored VWAP. Uh, as Steve Brian showed us uh, one today, and then we had another. We're going to use the high, the all-time high, going back to yesterday. So we're just going to anchor it right here, and we're going to click on this symbol right there, and you can see there is the anchored VWAP ran right into you today, and twice today and backed off even at the close there. Now we're going to go back to the first of the year. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit and make it a little scrunchy here, but so bear with me. Let's see, where is the first here? That's the second. So we got to go back to this day right here and let's do one from here as well. Okay. This is the uh, first of the month. Bam. And look at there. You have two anchored VWAPs basically side by side here, guys, where we're getting into some uh, some trouble. One is going back to the first of the year. The other one's going back to the all-time highs. And so, you know, I'm not going to tell you, you know, to draw an anchored VWAP on everything you're looking at. Sometimes it's pretty quite obvious when you have some range breaks and you have a, these pretty setups and the moving averages are all lining up. I don't want to get you... Uh, and to a point where you're trying to just marry up all these different uh, indicators, okay? But uh, occasionally it's something something interesting to do. If you're if you're trying to figure out why uh, something keeps stopping, man, just throw an anchored VWAP in there. Now you have it has to be a, a uh, uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but a uh, a benchmark, you know, uh, maybe like an all time high uh, in the stock or a, a recent high in the stock or a big gap like you saw back here on the first. Uh, so you want you want an event, not just pick one out of just random. Oh, let's go back to this day and do one. Yeah, you know I kind of like to keep it uh, consistent if I'm going to do it. I'm looking for some sort of uh, some sort of benchmark event that happened. Uh, so keep that in the back of my back of your mind. So anyway, that's the spies. There's not a lot to talk about on the daily. We're kind of in the same area we've been here for the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, 
Uh, now we're just below uh, that 10 period moving average, which can also be an area that we're running into. So uh, the queues are a little bit different, a little bit more weakness we're seeing in the queues. And there you have it, uh, just a bigger, much bigger drawdown yesterday uh, below their 10 period moving average. Couldn't even put a, uh, a print or two above it today. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens. I mean, other than that, uh, you know, the volume's weak. IWM is still very strong. You know, it's still still holding up well. Look at that. That's where your money's flowing. And it has been uh, for a while now. So uh, definitely some relative strength in the IWM. Q's probably the weakest over the last few days with the spies kind of just hanging out pretty much in the same area the queues are just right below their 10 period moving average. So I, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, there's very little bearish case to be made other than being below the 10 period moving average. And, and really, boy, with a lot of the stuff I'm seeing and trading and, and our little fund that we trade, feels like there's some underlying weakness, uh, but uh, man, this is just a stubborn market. Just when you think it's going to sell off, man, the buyers just come in and, and prop it back up. Jamie, you got anything to add there in the uh, in the uh, overall market recap? Uh, I'm pretty much on the same page there, Andy. That mm -hmm. that that 15 minute markup on the VWAP though is definitely very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. In the spies. And unfortunately, I went out. That's the one thing about those anchored VWAPs. If you don't save it and you leave the, the symbol and come back to it, they're going to be gone. So uh, if you want to keep them, you're going to have to uh, save your layout, I, I, I guess. Uh, all right, Jamie. Well, if you don't have much to add, uh, I'll pass it on to you and you can kind of uh, break down the holly there. I know there was one good, uh, decent trade in there in that uh, well, edit. yeah, there's uh let me go ahead and grab it here because there's okay. a little bit of everything today. Okay. Um, hopefully you can see my screen now. Mm -hmm. I okay. can. Okay. All right. So let's count them up. We had, uh, let's see, we had 14 signals total over here. If we're just kind of taking a, a glance at the channel bar here, six from Neo, six from 1.0, uh, two, 2.0, spitting out two. Uh, 2.0 kind of being the lagger today, uh, 1.0 up nicely, Neo up nicely. And so typically what I like to go over here are three different things. Number one, notice the spread that develops by the end of the day here between conservative and moderate profit. All right. And these these are all the ones where there's a sizable spread, as we can see here, 1625, 339 bucks, a small loser here in the NCNO. Uh, but moderate ending up uh, up a nice little chunk of change. And by the way, all of these values that you see here, the, the gains and the losses, are all based around risking $100 per trade. That's why when you see the stopouts occur over here, it's right about 100 bucks, a little less, a little more, uh, but right about 100 bucks. And that, that way, the system, if we're risking 100 bucks, the system sizes, sizes us accordingly uh, when it comes to the shares that we're going to be in based on the stop loss. Um, so for the new people out there, um, what is conservative profit mode? Well, that's just the system operating with its rules, right? Like you or I would do if we were in a trade. Um, profit target, stop loss, or a timed hold. Those are three things that can take us out of the trade in conservative profit mode. And in addition to that, what I like to call a couple of audibles that the AI can call in the form of profit save, uh, like we saw here on edit or a reduced risk, all right? Only one reduced risk today on a small loser. Um, but those are the five reasons why the AI will exit in conservative mode versus moderate profit mode, which simply puts the stop loss in. And if the stop loss doesn't get hit, then it holds until about five minutes before the close, uh, before closing the position out. Um, so having said that, we can see the large spread here in edit, but how might we go about trying to extract some of that spread, you know, before all this has played out, you know, we're looking in hindsight now. Well, let me get my pointer working here. I can't, okay, erase, now point. Okay, there we go. So first off, let's take a look at that edit trade. And we can see the AI, very, uh, not very much time spent in the trade at all. Right about one minute till 10 central standard time was the entry and the exit came about 23 minutes later, 22 minutes, 59 seconds to be exact. Um, so why did the AI get out here? Well, if we look at the action 
And here is the entry signal right here with the blue uh, arrow and the corresponding 6168 price that we can see right here. Um, makes the trade and the thing just kind of goes sideways for about well, one, two, 30 minutes. And this is typical with the AI. Uh, these exit algorithms aren't the smartest things on the planet, uh, kind of like a modified trailing stop. So a lot of the times when we see a position start to go sideways, we'll see the AI execute a profit save or a reduced risk. Actually, I kind of you know, like, I like monitoring the exits because when you see the AI exiting, you know, what's the problem here? You know, we got in, we're going sideways a little bit. Nothing wrong with that not exactly tempting the stop area. So all we had to do is be a little bit more patient, take uh, take a little bit more risk by ignoring the AI's uh, profit save exit and just stick with the trade. I mean, this is very, uh, it reminds me of me sometimes because we all get impatient. We're like, ah, it's not working. Let's just make a little bit before it goes against me. But we're in the trade for a reason. With the AI predominantly, because we've got statistical probability on our side to start with. So let's check out the strategy uh, that issued the trade, pullback long. What were the odds looking like for pullback long coming into the session here? Eh, probably the lagger of the bunch here. Coming in at the bottom of the win percentage after all the back testing and optimization was done, only a little bit better than 50%, but lo and behold, it produces the edit trade and we get a little sideways action. The shaded area right here is the time spent in risk, or excuse me, a conservative mode. I wanted to say risk off there, which is what it used to be called. Um, so basically a flat trade. All we had to do is ignore that exit signal and just be a little patient, and we would have been rewarded handsomely throughout the rest of the day. Um, so going back to the positive attributes of this trade, number one, statistical probability from the AI on our side. How was the volume in edit today? Well, you can see here 9.77 is where it finished on the relative volume scale. Usually kicks out about a million shares a day, almost did 10 million shares today. So that's the second positive attribute about this trade. We got it from the AI, we got raging volume behind it, and then we had additional opportunity to leverage this trade in the form of what we call an add-on, all right? As this thing consolidates a sideways, we have an auxiliary pattern here that also had the potential, but before these bars developed, we didn't know if it was going to you know, come to fruition or not. But we can see right here in this candle, drew the line from the previous high, nice little tight consolidation, and then boom, we get an opening range breakout, an auxiliary pattern on top of the AI signal and the great volume. Great time to add to the position. Then we get more of the same. Uh, this was a very controlled, buyer in here today it seems probably uh, the institutional variety um, accumulating a little bit during here finally having to up the price driving the stock up we get a nice consolidation period for the remainder of the day and then even one more opportunity to add to that position on the exact same pattern playing out just a nice little stair step up this is typically very uh, you know uh, characteristic of an institutional uh, client in there accumulating shares so big difference between 1625 and 339 with some really strong attributes, auxiliary patterns playing out on top of the AI, and then the opportunity to add not one, but two different times as that thing edged up pretty much all day. Notice the 10 period, it was in control all day as well. Got a little bit wicky, but always snapped right back. All right, moving right along to the next one. This one was a short play, and what a beautiful entry this one was as well. Um, AI call on the play right here, 85.12, after that nice little wick that had been put in there. Of course, the opening little flurry here kind of messed up this chart, something good. It looks like they were just shaking the tree, or maybe that was a, a seller getting some early shares out. Let's look at the volume on this one as well. We can see. Not quite as hairy as the edit volume, but still 2.2, doing over two times what it normally does, usually only kicking out about 544,000, getting close to a million today, so the liquidity was good. Um, same song, same dance. After the entry is made, looks exactly similar to edit, but to the downside, we just get a little sideways action here. AI gets impatient, 
trades not going down, which is what it's supposed to, and as the time decays, the AI's uh, more than likely to pull the plug uh, and the profit save. Funny thing is it says profit save right here, but it was actually a small loss. Sometimes that happens. But the bottom line is, once again, stop area not really in, we're never in danger of hitting that stop area. So if we just exercise a little bit of patient and today's action, patience was necessary on a lot of different things that I saw. Uh, we did get the, the move that we were looking for here. Um, can't really say that this was a great ad opportunity. Uh, coming out of this little tight range right here, yeah, it was, but uh, not exactly an opening range break by any means. Uh, but still, just a nice uh, stair step down, nice controlled selling, not a lot of crazy action after we got through those first 30 minutes there. So just a well-behaved trade to the short side in NCNO, and a big difference between losing 12 bucks and knocking out almost 300 bucks on that trade. And the last little guy here, hello. And, you know, not near as pretty as far as the intraday chart goes, but hey, you know, money is money. Um, T-A-L-O, getting the buy signal right here at 880. This one a little bit, you know, not as well behaved. We get to take the spike up here to around the $9 level, retrace all the way back down to uh, the, uh, the entry line. So this one, you know, it's hard to call how anybody would have reacted to it in real time. Once you see it, take a leg up here and come all the way back to flat. Get this little wick, maybe scare some people out like it's going to come down here and head down to the stop area only to snap right back and finish higher before the day. So this one not as obvious or not as easy to read as the NCNO and the edit. But the bottom line is this. Once you pick your out and you see the AI exiting and you're like, well, nope, going to stick to my hard stop down here, then you would have been rewarded uh, by doing that, as uh, this little stock just grinded higher all the way into the close, finishing uh, right off of highs. Not really any good opportunities in here to uh, to add to this position, but a good trade nonetheless. Now, this one is what I like to definitely call a trade around. This one is a little bit unique because of the quickness at which you know the profit target was hit. So in conservative mode, boom. We got that profit target quickly, and then look what it does. It comes all the way back down and just barely tickles that stop area. Now, of course, in conservative mode, we're going to record the profit target being hit because that happened first. But seeing something come all the way back down from a profit target and then tickle that stop loss area, something you don't see every day. Now, that is a tight little range there, but I love the way that this thing reacted at the stop area. It just barely wicked through it, got a little tighter candle here, and then boy, if you were paying attention on this one, once you saw these green candles start to develop here and here, could have easily made a re-entry uh, right at the same price as the AI and enjoyed a larger swing intraday where the majority of the move was. What was the high of that candle there? See, I lost all my little metrics here, but hold on. High of that candle. Uh, 786. So what a huge move uh, from a percentage basis. Only reason we knew about it was because the AI brought it to our attention in and out quick, a little retracement, a little bounce off that pivot area or the stop area, which I should say acted as a pivot area. And then we got the green 10 period in there uh, helping us figure out, you know, is this thing in play? You know, is it staying nice and above the 10 period? It looked like it just hugged it like a glove there. So an excellent trade around opportunity after the AI had already been in and out with a profit target hit from here and then just crying, you know, that's an incredible move, Andy, uh, on that little stock. Now, what else do we have in play? Well, check out this volume right here. Finished at 155 on the relative scale. And then if we play our other game here, what do we have right here? All right. After the AI has already done its business in and out, booked the profit, came down here and tickled that stop area. What might happen when we're in this candle? When we're in this candle, we're thinking, hmm, just barely tap that stop area. I think I'm going to take another entry in it here. Auxiliary opening range break on the table, not guaranteed, but lo and behold, that's exactly what played out. So depending on how aggressive you are and the more you watch these things and know how to identify 
the potentiality of these secondary patterns, the more com comfortable you'll get with it. But making in, in, another entry somewhere in here and then adding to that position right here has the best trade of the day as far as a percentage value goes. Some things that we can't necessarily see hiding in these columns down here. But very, uh, or Veru, a very interesting trade, a lot of potential in this one today. All coming from a trade around after the AI had already been in and out of it. And Andy, unless you have something to add to the Holly recap here, I think that's about all I got. Uh, no, very well done. No, Marcus, uh, Jamie, if you see his shares down there in uh, Veru, you're going to see is like 985 shares. His is based upon a, uh, uh, a size based upon the stop loss. Right. So, and you can explain. see if I hit tools and options and I go to my AI trade sizing, you can see I'm saying risk $100 per trade. Now it could go 100 shares per trade or a certain dollar amount, uh, but this one is risking 100 bucks per trade and based on the stop loss in play, it'll run the calculation and then get into the appropriate amount of shares. So if the stop loss does occur, you lose right at that level, right? Yep. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, Jamie. Good job, buddy. All right. Back to you, good sir. All right. Okay, so Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, I introduced this uh, a while back. Uh, gosh, it's probably been six, seven, eight months. I, I don't know. Mike C can probably tell you better than I can. Uh, but let's just take a look, you know, of what we're looking at here. It's pretty simple. Me, let me first kind of explain. I don't, I like to bottom fish. And the way, and the reason I do is because I know I'm going to get so much more bang for the buck when I'm right you know, versus playing a stock that's extended and and has a lot of momentum behind it. There's nothing wrong with that. I do that as well. But uh, as a matter of fact, I probably do that more than I bought a fish. But if the right setup is presenting itself, uh, and I've showed you guys over and over again, uh, probably the best, uh, my best, most recent uh, example was this JM uh, Jamui, <laughs> uh, Jamia. Uh, was right here when I started buying it right here around eight in the eight forties, eight thirties. It was just, you know, uh, coming now I found this on revenue growth fishing. And uh, at the time it's revenue was higher, but uh, look at that, you know, move when you're in these, get these things right guys, you can get such an explosive move and make, uh, and do as far as a percentage uh, of what you can make versus uh, finding a stock that uh, might might be overextended but pulled back to a certain area. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably my favorite uh, entry. But I still I do not mind you know bottom fishing. I think you have to put some rules in place, uh, and you're going to lose. I mean, a lot of them they're in a downtrend, and a lot of times you're going to be wrong. But as long as you you know adhere to your stop losses and get out. When you're right, you're gonna your your wins are gonna just one win could basically eliminate ten you know losses that you might have in another tra in other trades. So let me see. Let's take a look at the Dawn of the Dead and what I created here. And let's go to it's a top list, so there's no alert. Okay, I'm just it's like a scan. And let me click on hide unused here. Okay, the stock has to be over three dollars. Average daily volume has to be three hundred thousand shares. Position in five-day range, okay? It has to be in the upper 10% of its five-day range. So basically very close to, if not at, a five-day high. Position in lifetime range, very. it's a very simple scan. Position in lifetime range, a max of 10, means it has to be in its lower 10% of its lifetime range. So these things are definitely bottom fishers, okay? Uh, and then I got just a volume, a five minute volume filter here. Uh, just, you know, just wanting to see some sort of, just be above average normal. And so you don't get in too many head fakes, you know, that just draw suckers in and just drop it right back down. Not looking for anything uh, big, big volume. It's always nice if I see it, but uh, it won't keep me from, you know, uh, staying out of a trade if, if it's not doing huge volume. That's not, remember, this is a swing trade. I'm not looking to day trade. Uh, so it's pretty, like you see, it's a pretty simple scan. And man, I've been going through this and we're gonna go through some past dates here and look at some of these stocks that were in there. But uh, 
yeah, let's do that first. I was going to show some of the ones today, but let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to I'm going to go in history here, and we're going to go back uh, quite a ways. Go go back about a month. Uh, and we're just going to go to historical date. That's the great thing about trade ideas. Let's make sure we have it on three o'clock, so we're getting the close of the day. How these stocks finished in here on the close, and let's go back to let's go back to the night here, the Monday the night, and click OK. And before before we look at some of these, I'm I'm, I'm kind of going to give you an idea of why you see you're going to see such incredible trades in here. Remember how IWM was kind of stuck in the mud for the longest time back over here. Uh, let me get my little pointer here. You know, back over here, and every point behind it in history, it's been underperforming dramatically. You know, the Qs and the spies. Well, until recently. You know, starting in November, for whatever reason, reallocation, some money started flowing in to the small cap stocks. Now, all these are not going to be really small cap. Most of them will be. But you can see the move that we've had in IWM. And I'm not saying that you had to catch this move right when IWM broke out, because you're going to see as we go through these days, there, there were a lot of stocks that were lagging. But this was kind of an indicator when IWM started outperforming the other major indices, okay, this that maybe you should pull up some of these stocks that haven't been doing anything, been beaten up, okay, because it may be time for dawn of the dead, okay, these dead stocks may start to rise, and you're about to see that many of them did, and even though we've had a big move, I'm going to show you some in today's where, you know, there could be some laggers, and we could, you know, possibly have a nice pullback in the market, and some of these things set up again, but let's, uh, Let's take a look at some of these stocks, and uh, I try to go through and get some of these so we don't have to sit here and go through every single stock, but uh, I just kind of want to go through and, and maybe uh, catch some of the ones. Let me clear this off right here. Uh, there we go. And what, what I like to look for when they do finally, you know, get broke, you know, you can catch these things early on this top list, uh, but when you when you get these volume bars guys you know that's what i kind of look for okay cuz when they're when they're turning around they can huge volume can come in and you know that's kind of what i look for when i'm looking to stay in a stock for several days or several weeks you know huge volume nice up day on a huge volume bar like you see here let's take a look at this tco uh, well that one was going back to the night uh, was that the night yeah, that and that's the 13th. So actually, this day right here would have been the ninth, I believe. Yes. So, uh, not huge volume, but on that day, but nonetheless, it looks like this had a nice move and then a buyout uh, later. MAC. There you go. Boom. Look at that on the ninth. Okay. So even though this thing backed and filled, you know, once again, if you're swing trading this stock, you know, you probably. I would probably sit through that, you know, still above its moving average, its 10 period moving average, and look at the, you know, move after that, you know, gone from eight, eight bucks to 12 bucks. So that's a, that's over 50% gain. It's huge. Uh, and, and trust me, guys, I'm not skipping over the bad ones. All of, there's so many in here that are good. I'm just trying to show you, you know, some of the, some of the ones that really, really had an impressive day. Once again, let's take a look right here. Look at this gap. And look at this volume eclipsing so much of this volume, you know, down here. Just uh, and look at that subsequent move. Once again, a double. Okay, you could have made a hundred percent on that trade. I'm not saying everyone should. I'm I'm be honest with you. I wouldn't. I, I would probably. I'm I'm getting better of hanging on to a little piece. Uh, but I do a different style of trading. I'm not investing over here. I'm looking for big moves and and, and kind of if I if I get a 30 or 40 percent move, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it uh, and move on to the next trade. That's just my style. Uh, but uh, some of you, uh, you know, I would encourage trying to you know just keep if it's only 10 percent of the trade, try to learn to hang on to it and let it work for you. You know, something like this, because there's been some great opportunity in this. Uh, and some of these smaller ones. Uh, let me see here. I, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, energy stocks are just. Uh, uh, that's not energy stocks. 
uh, but gosh, you can just see just one one trade after the next. Look at this Macy's here, I believe. Now that was a gap. Now that would have been pretty tough, but uh, if you bought it on that day, but look what happened, you know, after it. <clears throat> oil stocks. We know that oil had a nice recovery. Look at this Oxy on this day right here. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Once again, there's your gap. Look at your volume. Okay. When you're looking to bottom fish and you're in this stock, you know, even if you didn't buy it early on this day right here, this would have been on my radar because of that volume. You know, even if I had to just put an alert at that high and then you could have caught it back over here and look at that, you know, move after that. So when you're bottom fishing, once again, I can't stress how important this is. You know, look for some sort of volume verification. Okay. For, for, especially for if you're looking for an explosive move. Uh, boy, there's so many I want to look at, but I, I got to go to another day here because this just, they're, they're, they're just full of them. And I didn't even know every day I went to was just incredible. Let's go three days later on the, on the, uh, uh, the 12th and, uh, clean energy. That would have been that day, right? No, that'd have been that day right there, wouldn't it? Come on. Yeah, there it is. I see it in the upper left-hand corner. So there's the 12th right there, clean energy. Not, you know, three times normal volume anyway. That's that's good enough for me. And look at this, you know, big move, sideways, boom, boom. And just uh, very impressive. Uh, soul, S-O-L, this day right here. Once again, there's your volume bar. <clears throat> A few more here. Gosh, there's just so many. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to the next date. Uh, and, and trust me, like I said, I'm not, we know what, we know what plug did. I'm not even showing this one, a huge move. Jamie, I'm telling you, I was just blown away when I was looking a lot, a lot going through a lot of these. I'm going to move over here to the 16th. Now, a lot of these you're going to see, as long as they stay down in their uh, uh, range, I think X was on this day, wasn't it? What was it? it had explosive move next somewhere. Look at all these stocks in here. My gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Look at X right there. Huge move. Look at that volume. And and look at X over here in position in lifetime range. It's still in its lower 25% even after the move it's had already. So Andy, who is the broker dealer? Is it Credit Suisse when or was it uh, the German bank? Deutsche Bank. Was it Deutsche Bank that was downgrading them not too long ago? Oh, yeah. It, 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 it wouldn't surprise me a bit. Yeah. Interesting. I can remember way back in the day, uh, Jamie, this is what they do. Uh, and it's all time high for X. It was trading at like 120, 110 or something like that. And Goldman Sachs came out and made it their stock of the year <laughs> at that price. That was the high. I, I don't trust. They're, they're so dirty. Uh, you know, Deutsche Bank probably had. Uh, wanting to buy stock, so drove it down so they could buy more. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else. I think F cell was in here. GE, look at GE on this, you know, just it just blows my mind. I mean, and so guys, I wanted to bring this to your attention because I think it's something you might want to keep, you know, might want to add to your, you know, arsenal. Uh, if nothing else, put it down in your taskbar so you can pull it up real quick and take a look. Uh, it could be a great scan for the end of the day. Let's just go ahead. I wanted to show you some more days, but man, we got to move on. But it, let's go to today's date and just see if there's anything in here. One, one I noticed that may be uh, energy play that may just be getting off uh, to the races here is, gosh, I forgot to write it down. And I think uh, it's uh, SWN. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, look at this, it moved today. Not huge volume, but and you can see, look at the position in lifetime range. Uh, by the way, if you don't have these position and range filters in your single stock window, and I'll be happy if somebody wants my single stock window to share it with you, uh, I, I, these could be very you know valuable. But uh, you can see right here, it's still in the lower five percent of it. So keep an eye on this one. It may just be getting started. Volume today eclipses. Looks like that's a record high volume for three months uh, there. So might want to, might want to keep an eye on that one. And if I scroll back, you can see it may be, uh, you know, if especially keep an eye on oil and 
uh, see, I thought they were more, SWM was more of a natural gas. I think they do both, but uh, RRC, range resources. Might want to keep an eye on that one too. Go ahead and just mark some of these up. And don't worry, guys. I can. Uh, there, there's tons of stuff in here. You can see. Uh, usually, this thing. Uh, you can ask Mike C or not. Uh, it's not this full. I've been seeing this thing just full of things lately, guys. So keep keep an eye on this. I'm going to go ahead and share it, guys. For those who do not have it, like I said, it's a very simple scan. But hey, uh, it can be. Let's see, Dawn of the Dead. Let me go. Ahead I just dropped it in there for you, Andy. Oh, you did? You had it? Yep. Oh, well, thank you. Mike C posted it. I grabbed it, and now it's oh, in the chat. Oh, good, good. Thank you, Mike C. Appreciate it. Saved me a little bit of time. Now, once again, uh, guys, if you are trading this style, it, it, you really want to put it to use for it. And if you get a big move, like some of the stocks we looked at, okay, it's not something you want to jump out. You know, if you get a uh, – well, I shouldn't tell you that because I hate something to reverse on you. You always want to take some profits off the table when you get a nice run. But the way I trade them is I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for a big move, uh, whether it be 20, 30, you know, percent uh, and maybe more like I did with NEO. I always kept a core position and traded with size around that core position. That's a way to do it. But uh, all right. We have to move on because we're going to play our little game again. All right, let me get my price alerts up. You guys know the game. Most of you do. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to uh, take recommendations for setting price alerts. And, and then next week, we will uh, come back around and we will take a look at them and see who did the best. Uh, always fun. And not only that, we get a good, lot of good ideas. I get some good ideas from you guys. And... Uh, and you guys can basically feed off each other. Let me know if I got a question here to answer. Literally, did one not actively investing yet. I think I'm knocking them out here, Andy. Um, okay. You might want to. Jim was asking to go back and see history on something. Okay. And I asked because X was trending down on those days, and I'm curious how the stocks on that list correlated. Are you talking about the stocks on? Uh, on the dawn of the dead, Jim, take it. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. That. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's. It's. Uh, he's saying on the 26th. I believe it was. The spy was trending down on that day. And uh, November 26, 18th. 1026. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Let's go back in history here. And we will set it back at 330. Even though we're setting it at the close, the, they're probably still 26. Ah, I'm only showing one, but since the market was closing down on that day, let's put it a little bit earlier in the day and we can see how they worked uh, from there. Let's try to set it about, oh, let's set it about 1030 my time. Well, there's Rite Aid and that would have been on this day right there. So you're right. I mean, Boy, look what Rite Aid did after that, though. There's Fossil. There you go. And Fossil right there on 1026 was popping up right here early in the morning. This is what this is exactly very similar to that JMIA that I traded. Okay. Take a position there. I'm not looking to get out just because it takes out, you know, that low or something like that. I'm I'm playing a small size here at first. I maybe use, uh, you know, maybe below 540 or something like that as my stop. Uh, and then I'm sitting in this thing. I'm sitting in this thing for days like I did with JMAI. And then boom, on this day, boom, I'm buying more on that huge volume. And so uh, there's a good one right there. ARLLP uh, 26 would have been this day right there. 
once again, sideways, look at that subsequent move. So definitely some stuff in there, some good ones. Uh, that's kind of a mess there. I'm not sure what's going on with this document security. That kind of got nasty. I'm not sure what's going on there. GovX. <laughs> you had to sit, <laughs> sit a long time, but you got your move yesterday. <laughs> So keep in mind, Jim. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so uh, curious about what they did on that certain day when the market was trending down. Obviously, there's going to be some ebbs and flows in these because you are kind of bottom fishing. Uh, but you know, I'm looking to uh, put myself in a position to take a position and you know sit through those ebbs and flows until I get my move. Uh, that's why if I'm if I if I feel like I'm a little bit early, I'll just play one third size, maybe half a size at the most, and give myself you know some uh, some oh. decent uh, liberal stop to the downside. All right. Yes, alert window. It should be it should be a top list, Rakesh. It's not a T window. Your Dawn of the Dead. Oh, it's an A window. Okay, let me let me share mine. Maybe uh, Mike's playing games on us over there. Okay, so that was an alert window. <laughs> okay, I got you. I think I may I think I may have uh, built one of those, but let me go ahead and, and uh, share this one as well. And I'll just call it Dawn T window. Coming right now. All right. I don't know if we're going to play today, man. Jamie, we're not getting a lot of uh, people to uh, participate. Uh, people kind of got out of the uh... – well, the last time we did it, we we spent – okay, here they come. Let's go ahead and throw them out there. All right, let's, uh, let's get it up here. He's talking about uh, KOLD 4790. Okay, 47.90, we can do that. Hope it doesn't go trigger right now because it looks like it may be. Don't try to get them too close to the, uh, and who is this? This is Dave. Dave. Dave's had some good ones lately. Hopefully that won't go off. Uh, FSTX. FSTX at, I need a price there, Randy. Uh, where do you want that F FSTX? Okay, Dave, that's okay. We got it in. If it hopefully will, as long as it goes off after I've shut down, it won't be an issue. <laughs> I'll come back to UNG. Stan says at well, let's see what he's doing here. That's a nice one there, Stan. Uh 955. Okay. You may have to call him out to me and see. Randy FSTX at 875. Yeah, I'm still backed up here answering questions. Andy, oh, okay. But let me know if you need help. Yeah, okay. That's all right. I can get that. That's Randy. And we got uh, CTIC at, whoa, CTLT, I'm sorry. at 96.50. Okay, I see that, it looks pretty decent to me. And that was Bill, Bill Inberg. Uh, we got Innox at 50. And that is Marcus. We got Dudley 
at 311. Oh, he's going for that move there. I see what he's doing. And that is, who is that? Jay. Oh, gosh, why didn't he give me the, oh, well, hold on. Okay, Andy, I'm caught up here now. Digley, you're on Digley for Jay? Okay. Yeah, got that. All right. And let's see, we got CTLT. I, I think I got that right? one. Yeah, okay. so that one, right. they went backwards. Veil, I'm on Veil. Oh, this is going to be a Veil 1710. He's going for more movement higher. And that is who? Uh, that is Waleed. And CCLT, looks like we may have got, no, let's see. UNG, you got that one. QS, long at 78. And that is Kevin. Gosh, it's not, why is it doing that? And that is Kevin. And we got, uh, got a lot of them. I think that's it. Let's see. Sun from Gabriel at 31. Going with an energy sector there. Oh, yeah. That could be some follow through there. And that is from Gabriel. All right, guys. And hold on. I'm going to share these. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any. Looks like I got them all. All right. Say, let me pull up my price alerts. Got to bring Scott in here to walk us out. Wait, that's not my... Oh great. I got some I got some doubles in there. That's okay. We're gonna share them anyway. All right, it'll be in the chat panel, guys. Price alerts. And you guys will have access to them. All right, Scott, come on in here. We'll uh Walk them out of here. Let's yeah, see. thank you. A um, couple of things to pick up on the way out. Uh, get that earnings book before we switch out to promote a different book. Go to trade-ideas.com slash earnings. It'll teach you all about how to take advantage of earnings seasons and give you some cloud links you can put into your layout to check out and make use of. Uh, we got a podcast, just released a good interview the other week with uh, one of our new team members, Chris Varley. So check that out. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to your pods and also check out the other interviews we've introduced this year. And uh, when you're subscribed, you'll be ready to pick up the next one as soon as it comes out. Uh, looks like... Update uh, didn't... Uh, let me... Go ahead and look up what the new code is really quick. Apparently, I didn't update this slide set. I thought I did. Uh, so the actual code that should be on there i thought i updated all of these and then last week's i thought was updated too but uh should be holidays let me go ahead and put that in on the page and uh if you want to go ahead and take that down and then just you can just undisplay and then redisplay your slide there and then everyone will be able to see it i'm pretty sure okay, i already okay. got that i thought i updated all these decks but uh 
I don't know. You, you did mention something at the top of the show about grabbing a different deck, so I'm not sure if that was. Yeah, I may have, yeah. I may have grabbed yeah. a little. Hold on, hold on. Anyways, it's, it's Holly Days, as in Holly, as in R A I, and then Days, uh, like, no, as in, yeah, there you go. So, anyways, that's the correct code now. Save the 15% off your first month of year of trade ideas. That's good through the new year. So, uh, check that out. And then if you have any questions, uh, email us at info at trade-ideas.com. It goes into our help desk software and gets you the support that you need right away. And uh, it's the best place to send it because it doesn't get lost. It's not like you're just sending us an email. You're actually posting that into our help desk software. You can find Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. Also find our um, Steve Gomez at Today Trader and Trade Ideas Pros, the Facebook handle to like and share all of everything we post with all your friends. Uh, thank you, Jamie and Andy, and uh, we'll get this recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. We'll get an email reminder tomorrow about how to find it. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, I'll, everybody. See I'll see some of you guys in the support session tomorrow. See you tomorrow, see you tomorrow everybody. everybody.